to this video friends so far we have learned about cell wall and cell membrane in this video we will learn about nucleus and cytoplasm so first of all let us understand cytoplasm friends what do you think where cytoplasm is present in a cell yes we have already learned in the cell structure that the part between the nucleus and the plasma membrane in the cell is called the cytoplasm it is a jelly like fluid well friends what could be the reason for it being jelly like friends because of its jelly like nature all the cell organelles like mitochondria golgi apparatus lysosomes etc float in it and the required proteins of these cell organelles swim in the cytoplasm and reach them apart from this it also maintains the texture of the cell and all the chemical reactions also takes place in the cytoplasm which is responsible for the cell to survive now let's understand about nucleus you have already seen that in both plant and animal cells there is a spherical thing in the center guys what do you think what is it yes it is the nucleus it is the center of the cell from which everything will be directed just as the brain in our body directs and controls all the processes such as breathing digestion excretion vision movement etc in the same way the nucleus of the cell also directs and controls all processes if we zoom in the nucleus you can notice that it is spherical in shape its outer structure is a two layer membrane called nuclear membrane it is same as that of the cell membrane of the cell so friends what do you think its function and structure would be similar to cell membrane yes its function and structure is similar to the cell membrane of a cell which keeps the things inside the nucleus separate from the other parts of the cell you can also notice many small holes in its layer these are called nucleopores inside the nucleus there is a jelly like fluid and it is called nucleoplasm now does this nucleopores allow the passage of nucleoplasm into cytoplasm what do you think well yes it does and the nucleus and the cytoplasm together is called protoplasm apart from this you can also notice a spherical part in the center of the nucleus which is called nucleolus now we will understand about the function of the nucleus by the way you must have understood the center of the cell is the headquarter which controls and directs all metabolic activities such as production of energy etc it determines the overall growth and maturity of the cell it also plays a central role in the cellular reproduction of cells so friends you must be thinking now do cells also reproduce yes reproduction occurs in cells as well in this process one cell divides into two new cells and the information and instructions in the new cell that is formed by cell reproduction go through the nucleus let's understand how it happens friends you can see some thread like structure in the nucleus these are called chromatin do you know about chromatin if we look closely at this thread like structure here it is a coiled chromatin the dots you see in the middle is a protein called histone protein and the structure of this thread is called dna the full form of dna is deoxyribonucleic acid so it can be said that the chromatin is made up of dna and protein 
But friends, what is this DNA? Have you ever heard this name? You must have heard about DNA tests in the movies or serials. This DNA test is done whenever the parents of a person has to be found out. Well, let's understand about this DNA. This is how DNA looks like. The coding you see in the middle of the structure is the information or instructions. Information like what will be the structure of the cell, what will be the work and how will be the structure of body also be, etc. The way a book contains information, the DNA contains information or instructions related to the cell. So, it can be said that the DNA molecule contains the necessary information about the structure, formation and organization of the cell. The information that is in DNA is called gene. That is, gene is called the characterization of DNA. Now, what is the role of genes? Just think. Well, when a cell divides, then the chromatin gets organized into a structure called chromosome. Now, you can see a lot of chromosomes in the nucleus of the cell. This means that the cell is about to divide and when the cell divides, some part of chromosome migrates to the new cell. So friends, in this way, through genes of DNA, instructions goes into the new cell. So it can be said that in inheritance, information is passed through the genes of DNA. Similarly, in children, information or instructions come through the genes of DNA of parents. Well, I guess you must have got an idea what happens when DNA tests are done in movies or serials. This is all about the nucleus and its functions. Now friends, based on the presence of nuclear membrane, cells are of different types. Let's understand this as well. In some organisms like bacteria, the nuclear region of the cell may be poorly defined due to which absence of a nuclear membrane such as undefined nuclear region containing only chromatin is called a nucleoid. Such organisms whose cells lack a nuclear membrane are called prokaryotes. We call such cells as prokaryotic cells. Pro means primitive or primary and karyote means nucleus. In these cells, many cell organelles are absent. An organism with cells having a nuclear membrane are called eukaryotes. They contain all the cell organelles. Examples like plant cell and animal cell. Summary So friends, we learned about cytoplasm and nucleus in this video. Cytoplasm is a jelly-like fluid that contains cell organelle and DNA present in the nucleus contains cell-related information and this information goes through genes into new cells. On the basis of presence of nuclear membrane in the nuclear region, the cell can be categorized into two groups, prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. Next, we will learn about cell organelles.